the nervous system. So this is the first video of two. I'm going to split it into two videos just because it's easier to deal with when you do it in little bites. So I hope this helps. Your nervous system is all about how your body detects and responds to changes in its environment. So how it responds to external or internal stimuli. So outside the body, these stimuli could be light and temperature. And inside the body, it could be carbon dioxide or lowering blood glucose levels. So it's all about how your body responds to these changes. It sorts out the information and decides how it wants to respond. This all involves four processes. So firstly, it's detection. So the stimulus is detected by receptors, which are specialized cells. For example, in your eye, you would have these specialized receptor cells called rods and cones. You learn about those later on. Then the impulse, this detection generates an impulse, an electrical impulse, which is transmitted into the central nervous system. It goes mostly to the brain, to the thalamus, where it gets sorted out. And then finally, a response is instigated and the response usually goes to your muscles or to some gland. So we're discussing how your body detects and responds to changes in its environment, these stimuli. And some common examples are light, sound, taste, touch, pressure, pain, temperature and smell. But not forgetting that many of the stimuli are internal, they're inside the body. And the reason why our body can detect these changes is because of receptors, specialized cells that can detect these changes, these stimuli. And we've got some many organs in our body that are full of receptors. For example, our eyes that detect light, our ears that detect sound, our taste buds which detect taste, our skin which is a huge sense organ with many receptors. It can detect pressure, pain, temperature. And as well as that, our nose which has all of these receptors, chemical receptors that detect smell. Your nervous system is made up of your brain, the spinal cord and your nerves, and it's further subdivided into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. And it's really important that you know both. Your central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord, just those two parts. And your spinal cord goes the whole way down your back and it's protected by those bones, the vertebrae. The peripheral nervous system is made up of the nerves that come out or extend out from the spinal cord and some of them extend right down to the very tips of your fingers and the very tips of your big toe. So we know that the human body is made up of trillions of cells while your nervous system is made up of nerve cells and particular ones called neurons are very important. So we have sensory neurons, motor neurons and interneurons and we have to be able to draw and label and know the function of each of these. Sensory neurons send electrical impulses towards the central nervous system. So just think of sensory and sending towards the central nervous system. So it all started with those receptor cells that detected a stimulus and this resulted in the generation of an electrical impulse. It gets passed to the dendrites at the top of the sensory neuron. The electrical impulse passes down one main dendrite towards the cell body. The cell body of the sensory neuron contains the nucleus and controls this cell. From the cell body, it gets passed down one long fibre known as an axon towards this area known as the axon terminal. And these end in these swellings, these axon terminal swellings, otherwise called neurotransmitter swellings. So that's a lot of content to take in. So the best way of tackling this is just to draw a sensory neuron. So you draw one and label it and we'll tell the story of what happens as we label it. So basically the receptor cells, for example, in your skin or your eye have detected some stimulus and electrical impulse has been generated. And the first place it goes or gets passed to is this end of the sensory neuron, the dendrites. From here, it passes along one main dendrite towards the cell body. The cell body is the part of the sensory neuron that contains the nucleus of this cell. It also contains the organelles and it's also where these special chemicals, which you'll learn about in the next video, these neurotransmitter chemicals are produced. So from the cell body then, the electrical impulse passes along another fibre known as the axon. Axon A for a way. Really important that you associate dendrites towards the cell body, axons away from the cell body. The impulse travels along the axon towards the axon terminal area, the very ends of the sensory neuron end in these swellings known as neurotransmitter swellings. It's really important that on any diagram of any neuron, you always draw in an arrow to show the direction the impulse is traveling in. If you don't, you lose valuable marks. 
Wrapped around the dendrite and the axon are these special cells called Schwann cells and they make this fatty substance called myelin. And this myelin forms a sheath known as the myelin sheath and it's really important because it's acting as an electrical insulator. Gaps in the myelin sheath are known as the nodes of Ranvier and they speed up the transmission of the impulse. So you should be able to draw and label the sensory neuron. Don't forget the arrow. Know that it's carrying those impulses towards the central nervous system. Know that there's one long dendrite towards the cell body and then it's the axon away from the cell body. Know all about the Schwann cells and the myelin sheath and note the position of the cell body. So next it's the motor neuron and the big deal about the motor neuron is the direction of the impulse away from the central nervous system towards an effector, a muscle or a gland. So think of motoring away, motoring on down that motorway. So one of the big things as always is to draw in an arrow showing the direction of the impulse away from the cell body. A key factor in recognizing your motor neuron and drawing it is the position of the cell body. It's on top of the neuron and the fact that there are only small dendrites and there isn't that long dendrite leading into the cell body and the fact that there is that long axon leading away from the cell body. The key points on the motor neuron it carries an electrical impulse from the central nervous system towards an effector, either a muscle or a gland. It has very small dendrites leading into the cell body and a long axon. It has the myelin sheath produced by those Schwann cells and the gaps between the myelin sheath are the nodes of Ranvier and they're going to speed up the transmission of the impulse. And note the position of the cell body, it's on top of the neuron and don't forget to draw your arrow going downwards from the cell body. The third type of neuron is the interneuron. It's found only in the central nervous system. So within the central nervous system, it carries impulses and it's generally transferring impulses from one neuron to the other. And just note that there's no myelin sheath. Make sure you know what receptors and effectors are. Receptors detect the changes or the stimulus, whereas effectors carry out the response. They're generally muscles or glands. Finally, just know what a nerve is. It's made up of many nerve fibers, bundles of axons. So that's the end of part one of the nervous system. Just make sure you can distinguish between the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, that you know neurons are nerve cells, that you know the difference between sensory, motor and interneurons, that you can draw and label each of those three and you can put the appropriate labels on in the correct way and that you know the role of each of those labels when it's associated with a neuron and know what a nerve is. Best of luck.